Hi everyone. Today's lesson is about finding every version of every one of your major chords up and down the fretboard and therefore getting the most out of your fretboard. The first thing that you need to know about finding these chords is that there are three closed chord shapes for any major chord. So by that I mean uh, chord shapes that have no open strings, all closed. The three closed chord shapes that you're going to need to know are the F shape, the D shape, and the bar shape. The F shape is exactly like an F chord. You just need to know that you can move that shape all up and down the neck. So just in case you don't know, I'll go ahead and break down the F chord. That is pinky, third fret, first string, index, first fret, second string, middle, second fret, third string, and ring, third fret, fourth string. So that's an F chord. It's also an F shape, and you can use that F shape anywhere on the fretboard to make a different chord. The D shape is based around the lowest version of a D chord. So that's the full D chord down here. I'll break that down just in case anyone doesn't know that. That's pinky, fourth fret, first string, middle, third fret, second, index, second fret, third, and ring finger, fourth fret, four. That's a D chord, but that's also a D shape. And you can take that shape and move it around on the fretboard to get different chords with the same shape. And the bar shape is the easiest to remember because it's just one finger laid across one fret, all four strings, and that's, that's a closed chord shape. You can move that around and get different major chords. We'll start with the G chord since that's, um, that's the easiest one. The banjo's tuned to an open G. So if you think about it, an open G is actually a bar chord, right? It's just we don't have to make that chord shape because the nut is already there but that is a bar chord. So anytime you have a bar chord, any bar chord, you'll count up one, two, three, four, five frets. And that fifth fret that you counted up will be the highest of an F shape chord. And that F shape is the next version of that chord on the fretboard. So in this case, that's the next G chord. So your first G is bar, which we're not having to bar because of the nut. One, two, three, four, five, F shape. And then anytime you have an F shape chord, wherever it may be on the fretboard, you'll count up one, two, three, four, go to a D shape, and that's your next, um, next version of that chord next G chord in this case. So from bar, count up five. From F shape, count up four. So bar to F, F to D shape. And then anytime you have a D shape, you're gonna count up one, two, three. Go back to your bar shape. And you start the whole cycle all over again. So you can continue up the fretboard so you remember from a bar shape, one, two, three, four, five. F shape with your highest fret of the shape being that fifth fret you counted up to. One, two, three, four. D shape. One, two, three. I have that extra fret so I can get that one. So we can take that same method, that same system to do any of the major chords up and down the fretboard. Um, let's go ahead and try it with a few. Let's start with D. D is um, a kind of a simple one because we already are starting on one of those closed chord shapes that's very obvious. It's a D shape, literally a D chord in this case. So remember, anytime you have a D shape, you count up one, two, three, go to the bar shape. So here's your first D. Here's your second D. Anytime you have a bar shape, you count up one, two, three, four, five. Go to the F shape. 
And anytime you have an F shape, one, two, three, four, go to the D shape, and so forth and so on. One, two, three, bar, and keep on going that way. C chord is one that sort of throws people off sometimes. You have to get a little creative in your thinking because the C chord, the way we make it, this lowest version, doesn't look like any of those three chord shapes, the, any of those three closed chord shapes. So you need to imagine that the fretboard goes on um, past the nut and which, which of those three chord shapes would it be if the fretboard continued? And it would be a D shape. It's just that we don't need to fret the um, third string with our index finger so we don't use this easier set of fingers. Um, that said, that is a D shape. And from any D shape, remember you count up one, two, three, Go to the bar shape. From any bar shape, one, two, three, four, five, F shape. From any F shape, one, two, three, four, and back to the D shape. Any D shape, one, two, three, back to the bar shape. And so forth and so on. You can continue that forever. Um, so just remember that anytime you have a bar, any kind of you have a bar shape, you're gonna count up five frets and the fifth fret will be the highest of an F shape chord. That's your next version. Anytime you have an F shape chord, you count up four and that will be um, the highest of a D shaped chord. That's your next version of that same chord on the fretboard. And then for many D shape, you count up one, two, three, go back to the bar shape. And that's where you start the whole cycle all over again. So my suggestion would be to um, you know, get comfortable rolling over those chord shapes. You could just use like a forward backward roll, get really comfortable rolling through all the G's, something like this. it at all it just happens naturally and then add another chord add the D chord do the same thing with that add the C chord do the same with that and work your way through all the major chords and um, that'll really open up your ability to improvise and come up with new stuff all up and down the fretboard <laughs>